Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about one of the common clinical conditions that which we see in the clinical practice. That is schizophrenia. What is schizophrenia? What is the nature of schizophrenia? What are the clinical manifestations of schizophrenia? Various etiological factors that lead to schizophrenia. Then psychopathology and various clinical subtypes of schizophrenia. Then how to diagnose and treat a patient with schizophrenia? What is schizophrenia? Schizophrenia is a long-term mental disorder involving a breakdown in relation between thought, emotion and behavior which leads to faulty perception, inappropriate actions and feelings, withdrawn from reality and personal relationship into fantasies and delusions and overall he or she experiences a sense of complete mental fragmentation. We can see this with the help of a picture. The picture depicts the relation between thought, emotion and action. Whenever a thought arises in a human mind, an individual experiences related emotions at the same intensity of his thoughts and express it in the form of words or actions. That means these three components are interconnected to execute normal mental functioning. In a schizophrenic patient, a person may get trouble in these domains either any one of the domain or in combination of three which results into mental disorganization or mental fragmentation. In 1896, Emil Kriplin, a German psychiatrist, has classified mental illness into two main categories. Number one, dementia precox and number two, manic depressive illness. Under dementia precox, he brought together various psychiatric illness such as paranoia, catatonia and hebephrenia, which were earlier thought to be distinct illness. The emphasis in diagnosis of dementia precox was on an early onset and a poor outcome. That is dementia that, that means deterioration and precox means early onset. He recognized the characteristic features of dementia precox such as delusions, hallucinations, disturbance of affect and motor disturbances. Further, Eugen Bluller, the Swiss psychiatrist, renamed dementia precox as schizophrenia in 1908. The word schizophrenia developed from a Greek words schizo and phren. Schizo means split and phren means mind. Bluller described the characteristic symptoms of schizophrenia as fundamental symptoms and accessory symptoms. And these fundamental symptoms are popularly known as four A's of Eugen Bluller. Now we will see some of the epidemiological figures related to schizophrenia. The schizophrenia is the most common of all psychiatric disorders and prevalent in all cultures across the world. The risk rate among men and women are almost equal. Peak age for onset of illness in men and women are 15 to 25 and 25 to 35 years respectively. When a child born from a consanguineous marriage or for schizophrenic parents has higher chances for developing schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is characterized by disturbance in the thought such as form of thought, stream of thought and content of thought, changes in the verbal behavior such as echolalia, perseveration, verbigeration, etc., changes in the perception such as hallucinations, changes in the affect like uh, emotional blunting, then motor disturbances like abnormal postural changes and stereotyping behavior. Finally, the changes in the uh, reality or the touch with the reality will be evident with the patients. Now we can see each group of disturbances in detail. At first, disturbance in thought and speech. Delusions are one of a common uh, terminology we can see with the schizophrenic patients. What is delusions? Delusions are false, fixed, unshakable beliefs which are not in keeping with patient's socio-cultural and educational background. So the delusions are false in nature, fixed in their mind. Since they are unshakable belief, the reassurance that which we give will not convince the patient. Delusions are of different types. Following our delusions are some of the important types of delusion that which we come across in the clinical practice. Delusion of persecution, reference, grantier, control, etc. Persecutory delusion. 
in persecutory delusion he or she may be believe that they have been uh, persecuted by others may be a family member or a close relative or a friend or any people around themselves example people are against me these kind of statements suggest that the person is having kind of persecutory delusion in delusion of reference a person have a strong belief that he has been referred by others example like a person uh, claims that people are talking about me either this content may be seen in the hallucinatory aspects or the patient themselves say explains that i have a strong belief that the people are talking about me they are uh, they are talking uh, for on my aspects so these all refers that the patient has delusion of reference in delusion of grandiosity a person will have exaggerated thoughts related to self importance statement like i am god almighty by the patient suggests that the possibility of delusion of grandiosity autistic thinking is a another type of symptom we can see with the schizophrenic patient the autistic thinking is the one of a most classical feature of schizophrenia in autistic thinking thought process of an individual will be governed by private and illogical rules he starts to withdraw to self third common symptom seen in the schizophrenia is loosening of association it is a pattern of spontaneous speech in an unmeaningful manner during speech they lose the relation between ideas spoken hence the speech is often described as being disjointed when loosening becomes very severe speech become virtually incomprehensible that means ununderstandable number 4 thought blocking this is another characteristic feature of schizophrenia in thought blocking there is a sudden interruption of stream of speech before the thought is completed after a pause the person cannot recall what he had mean to say during a thought block when a person continuously speak in between they have a sudden stop and he is unable to continue the point what he had said already neologism neologism is a formal thought disturbance where a patient expresses newly formed words or phrases whose derivation cannot be understood so the meaning of the words that which we they coin will not be understood by the listener that that does not sound any meaning or you cannot find such a words in the dictionary ambivalence ambivalence is a one of a fundamental symptom in schizophrenia it is a state of simultaneous and conflicting emotional valences towards a person or an object impairment in the abstraction is a one of a possible symptom in schizophrenia let us see what is abstract thinking abstract thinking is a ability to assume a mental set and shift voluntarily from one aspect of a situation to another at the same time to grasp the essential of a whole concept in a schizophrenic patient he loses this abstract ability he become unable to understand the general rules concepts and other aspects which are essential to meet daily living now we can see some of the common disturbances in a schizophrenic patient related to speech first mutism a patient with mutism lacks speech production that means they become speechless poverty of speech in poverty of speech speech amount of a patient is adequate but the content conveys in the speech has little information so the required information will not be conveyed by the patient in the speech in poverty of ideation the speech amount of a patient is adequate but the content conveyed by the patient is little so the information will be very little so that the uh, people cannot able to understand the what the matter is echolalia is a another one of common symptom seen in the disturbance of speech it is a repetition or echoing of the words or phrases of an examiner by the patient a patient may repeat the words or phrases of an examiner which has been said in the conversation at any point of time like how are you how are you how are you had your food had your food had your food repeatedly perseveration perseveration is a persistent repetition of words beyond their relevance even other stimulus has been given the patient will be stick on to the same point which the patient is explaining 
for an example during mental status examination we may we may ask many questions to the patient so a person will stick on to the same question that which previously asked even though we ask repeatedly different questions patient will be stick on to the previous question asked so that is what you say that persistent repetition of words beyond beyond its relevance verbigeration is a another disturbance in a speech where the patient has a senseless repetition of same words or phrases over and over again there is a difference between the echolalia and the verbigeration in echolalia the repetition of the words and phrases of the examiner but in verbigeration not of the examiner but the patient itself take some words or a phrase and they will repeat again and again among disorders of perception hallucinations are common in schizophrenia hallucinations are perceptions without stimuli auditory hallucinations are by far the most frequent these can be number 1 elementary hallucination number 2 thought echo or second person auditory hallucination number 3 third person auditory hallucinations in elementary auditory hallucination a person listen some voices rather than simple sounds so therefore it is also called as first person auditory hallucination example some ringing sounds or some noises that can be uh, annoying in nature etc when a patient hear one's own thoughts being spoken aloud then it is called as thought echo these voices may come from inside or outside the head second person auditory hallucination are the voices talks to the patient there is only two person the first person is a patient and the second person is considered a hallucinatory voice the patient may listen voices commenting one's own action sometimes patient may listens running commentaries coming to third person auditory hallucination it refers to the voices heard by the patient arguing discussing the patient in third person so patient may listen the conversation of two persons or two or more persons and either may talk about the patient or some other thing for an example listening conversation on tracking the patient visual hallucination can also occur usually along with the auditory hallucination during visual hallucination a patient may have experience a uh, visual forms or some metrics or some light that come into their eyes or seeing on the wall etc or the other type of visual hallucination are the seeing of some person some formed images some creatures some fire like things etc the other type of hallucination such as tactile gestatory and olfactory types are less common among schizophrenic patient let us discuss what are the disorders of affect common disorders in the affect are apathy and hedonia emotional blending and shallowness inappropriate affect and lack of rapport apathy apathy is a one of a negative symptom and the patient shows lack of interest or motivation in their activities and he may also experience low energy levels and unwillingness to act to a stimulus anhedonia anhedonia is a inability to experience pleasure in a previously pleasurable activities example feels less interest in watching tv playing football which are considered as most pleasurable earlier in their life emotional blunting and shallowness will also evident with the patient with schizophrenia A schizophrenic patient also may show inappropriate emotional response. It is called as inappropriate affect. So a person express certain behaviors like excessive crying or laughing when it is not required, or smile less when it is required to smile properly. So these kind of behaviors exhibit inappropriate affect. This patient also may experience difficulty in establishing emotional contact or working developing working relationship with the other people. Disorders of motor behavior will be more evident in a person with the disturbance in the affective domain that is cognition, cognition and affect that is thinking, feeling and action. The disturbance in the motor behavior ranges from de either decrease or increase in the psychomotor activity. From the normal activity when the activity come down to psychomotor slowness and towards the complete absence of movement that is stupor or from the normal range it goes up towards restlessness to the agitation and its severe form that is called as excitement phase they may also have poor grooming 
decrease self care and stereotyping behavior stereotyping behavior in the sense there they may have fixed pattern of behavior and these behaviors are repetitive strange in nature examples are like uh, rocking the hands and legs or various other body parts etc they may also exhibit some postural abnormalities like rigid postures so that means maintaining certain rigid posture for long period of time and other example is waxy flexibility uh, keeping the body in a such a way that it can be easily molded into different shapes or forms these are are the some of the examples for postural abnormalities apart from all these clinical features a schizophrenic patient may also exhibit other features such as decreased functioning in the occupational setting difficulty in developing and maintaining a social relationship loss of eco boundaries that is uncertainty and confusion regarding one's own identity and existence relation with the self and environment multiple somatic symptoms like various aches and pains and they may have a poor insight about the illness and they lack uh, social judgment etc are the common uh, other features we can see uh, in the schizophrenic patient notably there is no disturbance in higher mental functions such as consciousness orientation attention concentration memory and intelligence among schizophrenic patients when eugen bruller renamed dementia precox as schizophrenia he recognized that schizophrenia consists of group of disorders rather than being a distinct entity therefore he used the term group of schizophrenia so he categorized the symptoms as fundamental symptoms and associated symptoms so the fundamental symptoms was considered as one of an essential symptoms to diagnose the schizophrenia so it was commonly called as four a's of eugen bruller so what are the four a's of eugen bruller number 1 ambivalence number 2 autism number 3 affective disturbances and number 4 associated disturbances in ambivalence there will be a marked inability to decide for and against and in autism uh, autism a person withdrawn into self and when affective disturbance comes he experience various um, disturbance in the affect that they exhibit their behavioral pattern that is not congruent with their mood so called as inappropriate affect and they may also experiencing association disturbance where the thought process the train of thought will not be happen properly so there will be a loosening of association uh, uh, evidently present with this patient thereafter kurt snider described certain schizophrenic symptoms are essential symptoms for clinical diagnosis so they are popularly called as snider's first rank symptoms and the first rank symptoms includes audible thoughts voice hear arguing voice commenting on one's own action thought withdrawal thought insertion thought diffusion or broadcasting made feelings or affect made impulses made volitions or acts somatic passivity and delusional perception schizophrenia develops in four phases phase 1 the schizoid personality where there is slight uh, personality changes may or may not be identified by the individual and the phase 2 the prodromal phase where the personality changes get more and more worse and the phase 3 is a schizophrenic phase where the symptoms exhibits and the people are able to identify the clinical features very clearly and the fourth phase is a residual phase that a person gets various ups and downs or remissions and exacerbations of schizophrenia let's discuss each phases in detail phase 1 the schizoid personality during this phase an individual will have a very limited range of emotional experience and expression like less interest in activities unable to show happiness or anger etc he or she find difficult to enjoy close relationship and prefer to be loners they appear cold and unfriendly in manner the prodromal phase the second phase of schizophrenic process which is characterized by forgetting or neglecting personal hygiene and grooming by an individual disturbance in communicating with others lack of interest and initiative in activities feels less energetic often experience mood swings blunted and inappropriate affect withdrawn from social life and impairment in role functioning so all this 
characteristics will be evident and the people around them starts to identify there is some changes in the personality of this person or the normal routine of this person. Third phase, the schizophrenic phase is also called as symptomatic phase or active phase of schizophrenia. During this phase, an individual exhibits a wide range of symptoms related to thought, feeling and action, most prominently thought domain. Symptomatic presentation related to thought, feelings and action will be dealt in the following session. Etiologic factors for schizophrenia is currently unknown. However, several theories have been propounded. These theories include following. Number 1. Biological influences. Number 2. Psychological influences. Number 3. Environmental influences. Under biological influences, four major aspects has been considered as a biological basis for developing schizophrenia. They are A. Biochemical theories, B. Neurostructural theories, C. Genetic theories and D. Perinatal risk factors. As per biochemical theory, Schizophrenia develops due to various biochemical and regulatory alteration in the brain. The dopamine hypothesis explains an excessive dopamine dependent neuronal activity in the brain exhibits psychotic symptoms. There will be a functional availability of dopamine at the post synaptic receptor. This excessive activity may be related to increased production or release of dopamine at the nerve terminals or increased receptor sensitivity or too many dopamine receptors or a combination of these mechanisms. Other biochemical theories also hypothesis that abnormalities in the neurotransmitters like norepinephrine, serotonin, acetylcholine and gamma aminobutyric acid are considered as one, some of the factors that may lead to psychotic symptoms. Then abnormalities in the neuroregulators like prostaglandins and endorphin have also been suggested for a causative factor for developing psychotic symptoms. Coming to neurostructural theories, many research studies suggest prefrontal cortex and limbic cortex may never fully develop in the brains of persons with schizophrenia. CT and MRI studies of the brain structures shows decreased brain volume, large lateral and third ventricle, atrophy in the frontal lobe, cerebellum and limbic structures, increased size of sulci on the surface of the brain. Any degenerative changes occurs within the neurons as a result of any viral infections. So, physical conditions such as epilepsy, cerebral tumors, head injury, cardiovascular accident, SLE, Parkinsonism or like alcohol abuse or birth trauma etc. may resulting into structural damage further leads to development of uh, or the possible risk. When thinking of genetic reasons for developing schizophrenia, twin studies suggest that the risk rate of schizophrenia among monozygotic twins has three times higher than of dizygotic twins. If both parents were affected, the risk for getting uh, schizophrenia for the offspring is 35 percentage and if it is one, per one parent, the risk rate will be 15 percentage and any of a brother or sister or sibling, it is affected, the risk rate will be 10 and if any second degree relatives has uh, schizophrenia, the risk rate of getting schizophrenia is 2 to 3 percentage and overall if we take the general population total population out of total population 1 percentage is the risk rate of developing schizophrenia. There is no single gene has been identified as a causative factor for developing schizophrenia yet multiple genes that is polygenic uh, factors with small individual effects are also considered as the possible factors for developing schizophrenia. When compared with the genetic transmission common socio-economical and environmental factors shared by the family outweigh the risk rate across the family members. There are some perinatal risk factors attribute for development of schizophrenia. This includes maternal infections like influenza, some pregnancy complications, obstetric complications like delayed labor or malpresentations etc. All these factors affect the neuronal development of the offspring and may lead to brain cell damage that further increases the risk for developing uh, schizophrenia. 
under psychological influences, psychoanalytical theory and family theory and the stress vulnerability model explain the possible psychological factors that may lead to schizophrenia. Sigmund Freud explained the development of schizophrenia through his psychoanalytical theory. Freud believed that fundamentally the ego has a set of psychic functions that enables to distinguish between the fantasy and reality. It organizes the thought and makes sense of the world. Ego death represents a complete loss of subjective sense of identity. Freud believed that schizophrenia occurs when the ego becomes overwhelmed by the demands of it or an unbearable guilt from the superego, thus disintegration of the ego occurs. Ego cannot cope this situation, therefore it uses defense mechanisms such as regression, denial, projection and reaction formation to protect itself. The individual have poor ego boundaries, fragile ego, inadequate ego development, superego dominance, regressed id behavior, love-hate relationship that is ambivalent and arrested psychosexual development. The schizophrenic fantasies become confused with the reality which gives rise to hallucinations and delusions. Family theory also explains that various psychological reactions experienced by a child during the development or the childhood may resulting into development of schizophrenia. A mother-child relationship go through in a cold, overprotective and domineering pattern affect the psychological development of the child. A dysfunctional family system such as conflicted marital relationship, single parent, broken homes may create much anxiety among children. These factors affect the personality development in the children which may lead to psychological problems in their adult life. Stress vulnerability model explains increased number of stressful life events before the onset or relapse probably triggers onset of schizophrenia in a genetically vulnerable person. We can see with the help of a picture. In this picture we can see that high and low level of stress uh, and, and on the base you can see that low and high level of genetic vulnerability. When the genetic vulnerability is present, even a low level of stress is sufficient enough to trigger the schizophrenic episode when compared with the non-genetic uh, vulnerable person. Higher the genetic vulnerability, lesser the environmental stressor needed for relapse. According to this model, people with predisposition to schizophrenia may avoid serious mental disorder if they are protected from the stress of life. Increased expressed emotion was a term coined by Brown and Ruther in 1966. It is the amount of emotion displayed typically in the family setting, usually by a family or a caretakers. In text composed of several elements such as critical comments, hostility, warmth and over involvement. A high level of expressed emotions in the home can worsen the prognosis of patient with mental illness or it act as a potential risk factor for developing further psychiatric illness. While considering environment influence in developing schizophrenia, people with various socio-cultural factors such as low socio-economic status, congested accommodation, inadequate nutrition, absence of paternal care, poor family support, migration are under the risk category. Downward social drift will be evident during preclinical phase of schizophrenia and people tend to drift into poverty and social isolation. Individuals abusing illicit substances are also considered as risk group as the abuse behavior increases the dopaminergic activity in brain. Since the etiology of schizophrenia remains unclear, psychopathology of schizophrenia has been explained with the help of transaction model of stress and adaptation. This is explained with the help of a picture. You can see the picture here. There is a precipitating event. A precipitating event means any event sufficiently stressful to threat an already weak ego structure. So any event that may that may threat a person's ego structure, which is further uh, affected by the predisposing factor which is already present in the person that already we see with the etiological factors that is possible biochemical alteration or any damage in the neuronal structures which has already happened by birth or like a family history etc and uh, past experience like any prenatal exposure to viral infection and all other things and existing conditions that is abnormal brain structures either it is due to a uh, accident or maybe uh, other viral infections or some other kind of uh, 
uh, diseases like epilepsy, Huntington disease, Parkinsonism, etc., or maybe the fixation of lower level of development, or because of poor coping skills. The precipitating event triggers a primary cognitive appraisal. On this appraisal, he perceives a threat to self concept or physical integrity because of weak eco strength and uh, patient is unable to employ coping mechanism effectively. So, he use various defense mechanism. As a quality response, he, he will develop a maladaptive response, especially with schizophrenic patient we are talking. So, it develops a maladaptive response and this maladaptive response triggers the secondary cognitive appraisal. On secondary cognitive appraisal, he used various defense mechanisms such as denial, regression, projection, identification, religiosity as a coping me mechanisms against the weak ego strength. But as a quality response, most of the time he develops maladaptive response and this maladaptive response leads to various range of psychotic symptoms, initial psychotic episode or exacerbation of schizophrenic symptoms that leads to hallucinations, delusions, social isolation, violence, inappropriate effect, bizarre behavior, apathy, autistic behavior, etc. According to ICD-10 classification, schizophrenia is coded with F20 and its clinical subtypes comes under F20 category. So, let us see the main clinical subtypes of schizophrenia according to ICD-10. You can see on the slide F20 is for schizophrenia. F20.0 represents paranoid schizophrenia, F20.1 uh, explains uh, hebephrenic schizophrenia, F20.2 catatonic schizophrenia, F20.3 undifferentiated schizophrenia, F20.4 post schizophrenic depression, F20.5 residual schizophrenia, F20.6 simple schizophrenia, F20.8 other or other schizophrenia and F20.9 schizophrenia unspecified. Among all these subtypes, paranoid, epiphrenic or disorganized, catatonic, undifferentiated and simple schizophrenia are most commonly seen in the clinical practice. In addition to the general clinical features, paranoid schizophrenia is also characterized with the following clinical features. Number 1, dilution of persecution, reference, grandeur, control or infidelity. The delusions are usually well systematized and thematically well connected with each other. A hallucination usually present with the persecutory or grandiose content. There will not be any prominent disturbance in the affect, volition, speech and or motor behavior. The personality deterioration in the paranoid subtype is much less than that seen in other clinical subtypes. The patient may become quite apprehensive due to hallucinations and delusions and anxious and appear evasive guarded on mental status examination. The onset of paranoid schizophrenia is usually insidious. It occurs later in life that is late third and early fourth decade as compared with the other clinical subtypes. The course is usually progressive and complete recovery usually does not occur. There may be frequent remissions and relapse of the episodes. At the times, functional capability may be uh, slightly impaired. The differential diagnosis for paranoid schizophrenia are delusional uh, disorder that is paranoid type and paranoid personality disorder. Along with the general clinical features, disorganized or hebephrenic schizophrenia is characterized by marked thought disturbances, incoherence and severe loosening of association, fragmentary and changeable delusions and hallucination, emotional disturbance like inappropriate affect, blunt affect or senseless jingling various mannerisms, mirror gazing for long period of time, disinhibited behavior, poor self care and hygiene, markedly impaired social and occupational functioning, extreme social withdrawal and other odd behaviors. According to ICD-10 criteria, a period of 2 to 3 months of continuous observation is required to confirm the diagnosis of disorganized or hebephrenic schizophrenia. The onset is insidious and usually it happens at the early second decade. The course is progressive and downward in nature. The recovery from the episode is classically poor. Severe deterioration without any significant remissions usually occurs over time. 
Hebephrenic schizophrenia has one of the worst prognosis among various clinical subtypes. Catatonic type of schizophrenia is also commonly seen in the clinical practice. The word catatonia derived from two words that is cata and tonic. That cata means disturbed and tonic means tall, which is cata characterized by a marked disturbance in the motor behavior in addition to the general characteristic features of schizophrenia. It is present in three clinical form that is excited catatonia, stuporous catatonia and catatonia altering between excitement and stuporous. The excited catatonia is characterized by some of the important following features that is increase in psychomotor activity ranging from restlessness, agitation, excitement, aggressiveness and violent behavior and increase in the speech production with increased spontaneity pressure of speech, loosening of association and frank incoherence. The excitement has no apparent relationship with the external environment. Instead, inner stimuli influences the excited behavior, so the excitement is not goal oriented. Sometimes the excitement can become very severe and can be accompanied by rigidity, hypothermia, dehydration, etc. Catatonic stupor is characterized by extreme retardation of psychomotor functions. The characteristics of catatonic signs such as mutism that is complete absence of speech, rigidity, maintenance of rigid posture against the efforts to be moved, the negativism that is apparently motiveless resistance to all commands and attempts to move or doing just the opposite what we say, then posturing that is voluntary assumptions of an inappropriate and often bizarre posture for a long period of time, then being stuporous then echolalia repetition or echo mimicking the phrasal words heard then echopraxia repetition of echo or mimicking the actions that is observed by the other per observed in another person waxy flex flexibility ambi tendency due to ambivalence other signs such as mannerisms stereotypes usually verbal and behavioral automatic obedience verbigeration usually uh, incomprehensive speech etc Dilutions and hallucinations may be present but are usually not prominent in stuporous catatonia. Not all features are present at the same time but the number of uh, symptoms that which already we listed may present one or two or in combination of different types. In catatonic form altering between excitement and stupor, they may have a common clinical features of both excited and stuporous catatonia alternatively uh, in the patient. The onset of catatonic schizophrenia is usually acute and in the late second and early third decade. The course is often episodic and recovery from the episode is usually complete. However, residual features are present after two to uh, three or more episodes. Undifferentiated schizophrenia is a very common type of schizophrenia which is diagnosed either when uh, features of no clinical subtypes are fully present or when features of more than one clinical subtypes are exhibited by the patient and the general criteria or general characteristics of diagnosis of schizophrenia are met. Simple schizophrenia is a one of a clinical subtypes which is most difficult to diagnose. It is characterized by early and insidious onset and progressive course. The presence of characteristics of negative symptoms of residual schizophrenia such as marked social withdrawal shallow emotional response with loss of initiative and drive, vague hypochondriacal features, a drift down the social ladder and shabby dressing and aimless wandering. The delusions and hallucinations are usually absent and if present they are short lasting and poorly systematized. The prognosis of simple schizophrenia is usually very poor. When a schizophrenic patient develop depressive features within 12 months of an acute episode of schizophrenia then it is called as post schizophrenic depressive subtype. The depressive features develop in the presence of residual or active features of schizophrenia and they are associated with the increased risk for suicide. The depressive features can occur due to side effects of antipsychotics or maybe a regaining of uh, insight after a recovery or just be an integral part of a schizophrenia. It is important to distinguish the depressive features from the negative symptoms of schizophrenia and extrapyramidal side effects of antipsychotic medication. 
The course of uh, schizophrenia patients are with ex various exacerbations and remissions. More than 50 percentage of patients have poor outcome with repeated hospitalization. In this slide, good prognostic factors and poor prognostic factors are mentioned in the separate columns. You can pause the video and go through the each prognostic factors and uh, write down in detail. A treatment of schizophrenia can be given at outpatient and inpatient setting. But inpatient treatment is required when the patient exhibit severe psychotic symptoms, poor insight, risk for self that is suicidal risk or other directed violence, then poor compliance to treatment and when patient required psychosocial rehabilitation. Common aspects of treatment modalities for a schizophrenic patient include somatic treatment such as pharmacological management and electroconvulsive therapy and psychosocial uh, treatment and psychiatric rehabilitation and psychoeducation for the patient family and the patient itself. Antipsychotics are primarily used to treat the schizophrenic patients. The antipsychotics act by decreasing the dopaminergic activity by blocking the postsynaptic receptor in the brain. You can see in the slide that where the two types of antipsychotics which are commonly utilized that is typical antipsychotics and atypical antipsychotics. Examples are already given with the dose per day. The common route of administration of antipsychotics are oral or intramuscular or depot preparation for the long term sustainability. The other drugs we use as a secondary drug such as antidepressive agents, mood stabilizers and benzodiazepines as required to treat the secondary symptoms associated with the uh, schizophrenic schizophrenia. It is extremely important to note down the presence of extra pyramidal side effects when we treat the patient with the typical antipsychotics. And this is also one of the major factors that the patient will not comply with the treatment as the symptoms develops. Clozapine is a drug that falls on the category of atypical antipsychotics. The clozapine can be used very effectively for treatment resistant schizophrenia. A schizophrenia becomes a treatment resistance when it is not response to the uh, treatment at least for the two types of antipsychotics in an adequate dose for an adequate time. The adequate time in the sense around 4 to 6 weeks for each antipsychotics. And clozapine will work well with the patient with the high suicidal risk. The clozapine can cause a granulocytosis approximately 1 percentage of total patient uh, population that has been administered with the clozapine. Hence, it is not used as a first line of therapy. Whenever we uh, prescribe the clozapine, we have to monitor the complete blood count especially WBC and neutrophil levels during the therapy. Electroconvulsive therapy is indicated when acute exacerbation uncontrolled with the drug occurs or patient exhibit catatonic stupor, uncontrolled catatonic excitement or exhibit severe side effects with drugs in the presence of untreated schizophrenia. Usual number of ECT given is 8 to 12 ECT with 2 or 3 ECT per week. The common voltage used are 70 to 120 volts for the duration of 0.7 to 1.5 seconds. Psychosocial therapies or treatments for schizophrenic patient includes following number 1 individual psychotherapy, number 2 group therapy, number 3 behavioral therapy, number 4 occupation therapy, number 5 family therapy and number 6 milieu therapy. In individual psychotherapy, reality oriented individual therapy is the most suitable approach employed among schizophrenic patients. The primary focus was given to decrease anxiety and create trust in the treatment process. During this process of therapy, a therapeutic relationship may be achieved with honesty, simple directness and a manner shown to them that respects their privacy. Once therapeutic relationship established, it is required to maintain reality orientation by exploring patient behavior and relationship. Help them to identify sources of real and perceived danger and ways to reacting it appropriately. The methods to improve interpersonal communication, emotional expression, frustration, tolerance are also be attempted. The group therapy is more effective especially when it is given in an outpatient service. Generally, the group therapy focuses on real life plans, problems and relationships. 
social interaction, sense of cohesiveness, identification and reality testing is achieved within the group setting have proven to be highly therapeutic. Groups are led in a supportive manner rather than in an interpretive way appears to be most helpful for schizophrenic patients. Behavioral therapy is a powerful tool for helping patients to change undesirable behavior such as bizarre, disturbing and deviant behaviors into appropriate behaviors. It is important to set clear and definite goals. Attaching positive, negative and aversion reinforcement to adaptive and maladaptive behavior will maximize its effectiveness. Occupation therapy is a technique which the patient is purposefully involved in the activities to maximize their skill against the disability. In a schizophrenic patient, he or she may be involved in a goal-oriented purposeful activity to maximize their skill to limit their disability. Some occupational activities used for the schizophrenic patients are involving them in a non-competitive, solitary and meaningful tasks which require some degree of concentration. Example, puzzles, scrabble, molding clay, etc. Family therapy is an inevitable part of schizophrenic treatment. It aims to support the family system, to prevent or delay the relapse and to help them to maintain the patient in the community setting. The therapy covers education and orientation to the family about the treatment and treatment process and enable them to participate actively in the treatment process. They are also taught to manage expressed emotions such as critical comments, hostility, over-involvement, etc. towards the patient. During milieu therapy, as you know, the patient has been taken into a small groups and they stay for a period of time that is around 9 to 18 months and during the stay, the patients are encouraged to take responsibility for themselves and others within the unit so that they will be able to manage their own all daily needs without the support. Psychiatric rehabilitation is also known as psychosocial rehabilitation. It is a process of restoration of community functioning and well-being of a patient with mental illness. Following are some of the psychiatric rehabilitation measures employed for a schizophrenic patient. Number 1. Social skill training. Social skill training has been one of the most widely used psychosocial intervention in the treatment of schizophrenia. Social dysfunction is the hallmark of schizophrenia. Indeed, impairment in social functioning is included as one of the defining criteria in schizophrenia. Considerable attention is now being given to enhance the social skill among schizophrenic patients. The educational procedure in social skill training focused on role plays. A series of brief scenarios are selected and these should be typical of situations for the patients experience in their day-to-day -day life and it has been graded in terms of level of difficulty. The therapist may serve as a role model for the some behaviors and the therapist demonstrate uh, all the uh, methods that they have to follow in the role playing and immediate feedback is provided uh, once they have been performed the role play. Cognitive retraining is provided to schizophrenic patients to develop underlying cognitive skills so that they may be able to function their daily activities, social interactions and independent living in a better way. It may also help them to improve their social skills. Pre-vocational and vocational rehabilitation training are the important aspect of psychosocial rehabilitation. Pre-vocational training can be defined as any approach to vocational rehabilitation in which Participants are expected to undergo a period of preparation before being encouraged to seek competitive employment. Through pre-vocational training, we are equipping a schizophrenic patient uh, in improving their skills uh, that is required for a specific job. So, the, it is not the exactly job activities, rather certain prerequisite skills, maybe like uh, communication skills or like uh, hand-eye coordination etc. So, that skills will be trained through pre-vocational training and as part of vocational rehabilitation, uh, various types of employment facilities has been provided. It could be being self-employed or paid or unpaid employment like voluntary services or working as a part-time member or in a sheltered environment or being supported employment by some uh, employees or in a controlled environment. 
job seeking and job placement facility can also be provided as part of vocational rehabilitation other aspects of psychosocial rehabilitation includes uh, day homes day homes halfway homes or quarterway homes or day hospitals to provide a supportive environment for patients recently discharged from the hospital who require some limited level of clinical supervision psychoeducation to the patient and the family or a caretaker is extremely important when we are thinking about treatment process of schizophrenia educating them about nature of illness prognosis various symptoms and different ways for family to respond to the illness is considered as one of the important aspect of psychoeducation it is required to educate them on various treatment aspects including follow up home care and rehabilitation facilities orientation on relation between stress and mental illness medication and its side effects importance of treatment compliance situation that warrants an emergency assistance training facilities such as social skill training and daily living skill training will help to progress the treatment smoothly it is essential to explain about various support services available for the schizophrenic patients to their family most of the time they may not be aware about these support services they includes financial assistance or free medical assistance or med medicine supply a legal assistant that is required for managing uh, their own properties or other uh, aspects of their uh, daily living then caregiver support groups for the caregivers to minimize the caregiver burden and various home health care facilities that is available at the local uh, situations so that they can avail all these facilities and make use of the facilities to continue their treatment process to conclude this video lesson we can go through what are the important aspects that which we have seen in this class at first we have seen what is schizophrenia some historical background and nature of schizophrenia various clinical manifestations at various domains etiological factors especially biological psychological and environmental influences that may lead to schizophrenia how the schizophrenic process develops through psychopathology that is a transactional model then various clinical subtypes and very important five subtypes of schizophrenia and how to diagnose the schizophrenia and the treatment measures of schizophrenia especially psychopharmacological electroconvulsive therapy psychological therapies psychosocial rehabilitation and psychoeducation for the patient and the family if you like this video please share this video to your friends and subscribe this channel and never forget to press the bell icon Thank you.